So hey guys, this is your favorite fanfic heaven. So in this video, we will see, what if Naruto summoned the King U and become first common rider U. But before we start, remember to subscribe and like this video. Now let's start. Naruto was sailing through the forest of death, his body numb and the seal on his stomach burning from whatever the hell that Snake Pito did to him. Something called Gogyo Fuin, whatever it was, his stomach burned, and he couldn't use his chakra at all. Naruto burst through a weak wall in an abandoned shed, tumbling on the ground until he hit another wall. He managed to sit up, holding his side and groaning in pain. He banged his fist on the wall in rage at being so easily tossed aside. Unfortunately, the wall was weak, so, his minor temper tantrum broke the wall open, the crack tracing a hole in the structure behind the shed, Naruto falling in, sliding on the rotten piece of wood. He screamed the whole way down the tunnel. Until he finally stopped, his head acting as a brake by slamming into a large stone box. His head exploded in pain and he clutched the top of his noggin, rolling onto his side. When the pain faded, he slowly got up, using the box as a crutch to help him stand. Looking over the box, he saw it had a carving of a man lying down, clad in ornate armor with various animals carved throughout the design. An empty slot where a belt buckle would be. Curiosity got the better of him and he attempted to push the lid off, only for the heavy slab to fly off the box, which he realized was a tomb. Looking inside, instead of a corpse, he found, coins. A massive cache of coins, silver with a ridged edge, the same animal symbols on the man's armor individually on each coin. On top of, the pile was an ostentatious belt buckle, black with blue circuit lines, three empty slots that might fit these coins. Before Naruto could do anything further, an unknown force pushed him into the pile, which suddenly swallowed him up. And the lid slid back on, closing him in. He was caught up in a storm of the coins as the belt buckle latched onto his waist and all the coins funneled into it, Eve. And though there should be no way it could hold them all. Naruto was engulfed in a blinding light as he finally passed out. Mindscape. Shooting up from lying on the ground, Naruto found himself in an extravagant castle specifically the throne room. Atop a pile of the silver coins from the tomb was a golden and black throne, the armored man from the lid sitting within the throne, leaning his head against his fist. Looking him over, Naruto could see the finer details of the armor. Red compound eyes framed with golden wing designs along the curve of the helmet, a crest atop the forehead with a red gem. Within the gem, and the eyes for that matter now that he concentrated, he could see the symbols for a hawk, a peacock, and a condor. On his shoulder was a pair of golden pauldrons with a silver plate running from front to back. Three gems in each, gray on the left, blue on the right. The gray gems had the symbols of a rhino, a gorilla, and an elephant, the blue an orca, an eel, and an octopus. A black plate of armor with blue trim rested over his right bicep, a golden ring attaching it to the arm, a golden gauntlet with a white lighting design on the forearm, the wrist guard having an E. Extension outwards for a white tube to plug in from the pauldron to the wrist, golden armor on his hand. The left armor followed a similar design, but the bicep trim was gray, there was no tube, and th. E gauntlet was twice as large as the forearm, concentric hexagons on top of it. The man wore armor on his hips following a similar design to the pauldrons, green gems on the right, yellow on the left. They held a Hercules beetle, a praying mantis, a grasshopper, a lion, a tiger, and a cheetah all respectively. They had the same armor on the kneecaps but the right shin had black, plated armor with gold trim. A large blade attached to the back of the calf, a black ankle guard with green trim on top of a black boot with gold arm and insectoid spikes facing forward. The left shin guard had a central angular plate, black with gold trim. And symmetrically placed black circles around the calf, three fur-like spikes to the side, a yellow variant of the ankle guard, and the boot had three feline claws on the front. On his waist was a wheel with one colored gem from the five groups. Hello, human. The man greeted after a sufficient amount of silence. You should be honored that you are the new vessel for me, King U, the first U. He commented snidely, standing up from his throne, stepping down to stand before Naruto. After getting over his shock at the sheer power this, King Ooo's, voice commanded, Naruto growled at him. Who the hell do you think you're talking to? You're human, too. And what do you mean vessel? 
And what the hell kinda name is Ooh? He pointed an accusing finger at his armored visage, ignorant of the enraged scowl under the helmet. His bravado was short-lived when the armored man grabbed him by the throat and lifted him up in the air with one hand. Stay your tongue, worm. I am the perfect being. I have achieved a state of power that has ascended me from this mortal plane. And due to your special circumstances, holding this fox demon within you, you won't be overtaken by my presence. But merely hold it. As such, I can only be blessed onto this world through your death, but I can't exactly do that myself. King Wu dropped Naruto, kicking him in the stomach when he landed. Sending him tumbling away. Another method for me to be revived is flooding your system with my power, turning your weak body into a shell fit for a king, but the same seal that held. The demon is keeping that from happening. I can only give you power in small increments, but I shall live again in time. The king announced with finality. Holding his stomach, Naruto glared up at U, slowly standing up. You're fucking insane. Why should I do anything you say? And what's up with all these fucking coins? You have some kind of fetish. Naruto insulted, standing defiantly. And what do you mean? Held, the Kyubi. You haven't let the furball out, have you? Naruto asked fearfully afterwards, knowing the power the Kyubi held. U appeared before him again, backhanding him across the face, sending him crashing against a pillar. I said hold your tongue, worm. Allow me to explain. Your, Kyubi, has been compacted into this. Holding up a blood-red coin, the king turned it, slightly to show the symbol of the Kyubi no Kitsune on it. His consciousness is gone, his soul eradicated, he is now just. Another facet of my power. And soon, yours, because you will do what I say, or you'll never escape my tomb. And you'll die all the more easily, letting me escape quicker. And these metals are the main component of my power. They are my lifeblood, my sustenance. Walking over to him, the first common rider who kept Naruto's head down with his foot. Now be quiet while I spin you a tale. The story of me, U, and the medals. In the before time, I ruled over a large part of the world, but I desired more power. I had my alchemists create five sets of core medals, and when they outlived their usefulness, I turned them into cell medals. When I began to take some of the cores, one each. The remaining nine used the cell metals to live, becoming greed, living desire. With their remaining parts in my control, they served me as my generals, but soon they turned on me, but. One of their own worked for me the entire time. Only in the last moment did I betray him, his usefulness at an end, and sealed them all up as their core metals, which I scanned in order to become a living god. And I succeeded. The king laughed menacingly and triumphantly, as he flexed his power, enjoying the sensation of, indeed, becoming a god. The power was too much for my human body, and I turned into my own tomb, sealing my generals with me. Centuries later, a human happened upon my tomb and unsealed the medals, reviving the greed and using my power for his own selfless path of atonement. Along the way, he discovered lost core medals, and his story faded into obscurity. Now I live again, if only in the body of a child. So whether you like it or not, you will be imbued with this power. And your body will transform as such to accommodate it. Until the day comes when we must fight to the death over who lives and who dies, I will be training you in this power. I wouldn't want to win too easily. The king remarked, smirking maliciously under his helmet. Holding his hand up in the air, various core metals flew into his grasp. You will automatically have all my medals, but I will train you to their full potential. Becoming stronger than your predecessor could even dream. I have also acquired the medals he received outside of my driver. Holding them up, he showed the foreign medals, a cobra, a turtle, a crocodile, a pterodactyl, a triceratops, a T-Rex, a horned monster known as an Imagine, and a golden black version of the Condor medal, Shocker. He dropped them on Naruto, and his body absorbed the medals. One final thing. Like me, you are filled with the epitome of desire, but because of those purple metals, emptiness counteracts it, so you are a half-breed, human and greed. Taking his foot off Naruto's head and kneeling down to him, he made eye, compound eye contact with the scowling boy. I would suggest you collect these other, tailed, beasts, for they can be turned into metals as well. Grabbing Naruto's chin, he forced him to look directly at him. Do we understand each other? He asked, 
Shaking his hand off his face, Naruto actually punched Uu in the face, sending him stumbling back slightly at the force behind it. The boy apparently was taking to his eventual new body faster than he thought. Fine, whatever you say, you crazy fuck. But when the day comes, I'm gonna kick your fucking ass and then you're gone. Naruto proclaimed defiantly. Uu actually chuckled at his bravado. I look forward to the day when I crush you underneath my boot. With that, Naruto was cast out of his mind to suffer the process of his body changing. Waking world, Naruto groaned as he slowly sat up, then winced as the familiar burning sent another wave of pain through his body. And he held his stomach, gritting his teeth. He toughened through the process until it was finished an hour later, and he was on his hands and knees, panting heavily, sweat dripping. Down his face as he finally started to catch his breath. Over the hour wait, his body went through many changes, chief of which being his favorite, he grew in height. Before, he was a hilariously short 4 feet 3 inches. Now he was almost 6 feet tall. He also seemed to lose any body fat and his muscles became leaner, his body toned. In terms of his mind, he found that the basic knowledge of each of his new forms was now his. With his new height came a torn jumpsuit. It was way too small for his body now, and he had to remedy that. Thankfully, his boxers were okay, that would have been embarrassing. After crawling back through the tunnel, with some difficulty, he was in the shed again. Looking around the old shed for some clothing, Naruto found a black muscle shirt and baggy shorts. After he put the pants on, the belt buckle from the tomb appeared on his waist, shrinking to a normal size, the U scanner becoming a seal on his palm. Naruto smirked and jumped out the hole his crash created in the shed. A weight lifted off his shoulders with the disappearance of the Kyubi forever, even if it was replaced with the asshole presence of King U. He wondered about the Kyubi medal the Biju became and what it could do. He decided to use it in his next fight, hoping that would be soon. And Kami says yes, because a huge snake appeared and seemed intent on making him a snack. Smirking at the prospect of a fight, Naruto held his seal-bearing hand over the shrunken U driver until a ting went off. One large blood red ring appeared in front of him. Kurama, hard, core, with the voice from the driver done. Naruto's transformation began. He was consumed in a burst of fire as the circle launched at him. Naruto wore a black bodysuit of armor, as the image of the Kyubi appeared on the Olu. Ing that forms on the chests of all combos of U, divided into three parts. The first part its smirking grin, the second its claws about to grab some black orb the last its legs, sitting on its haunches, and its nine tails. For his helmet, two large crimson compound eyes appeared, surrounded by orange armor, its toothy grin forming a stylized pattern under it where Naruto's mouth would be, as blah. CK streaks led from his eyes down the fox ears that swept back. For the arms forms, dark orange trim formed on his shoulders and down his arms, into his gauntlets. Dark orange, almost red, cylindrica. L gauntlets leading to armored clawed fingers, a glowing, vein forming down the gauntlet and hand and down each finger. For his legs, dark orange armor formed from the knees down, leading to clawed toes on an armored foot. Another vein down the legs. He actually wore a skirt of the same color behind him, divided into nine segments. He roared to the sky as he attained his new form, the common sen. Say in the snake's mind telling it to run away from the demonically oppressive force exploding from the boy, but its orders from its master overrode that, and it lunged at the human. Naruto stopped its rush with a lift of his hand, grabbing its maw and slamming it shut. Did you really think that would work? Naruto asked, smirking under his helmet, willing his power over the Kyubi to form, the knee. Nay segments of his back skirt split apart and grew into the nine fox tails of the biju and slammed on the head of the snake summon. As it was dazed and tried to retaliate, Naruto hefted it over his head with both arms and, with some difficulty, threw the thing high into the air. Sliding his hand across the driver, it let out a cry of, scanning charge. And the same ring from before appeared over Naruto, creating a spyglass at the snake. Foul red chakra flowed from the veins on his gauntlets and greaves to the space his nine tails pointed to in front of his helmet, quickly turning into an incredibly dense black orb that Naruto's helmet swallowed, as the maw on it came to life for a second to do so. Kayubi Hisatsu, Naruto roared to the sky, 
unleashing the foe Bijudama towards the giant snake, obliterating it from existence before it could return to the summon realm. Naruto smirked to the sky and reverted to himself in his arguably civilian clothing. He jumped through the trees towards where he was thrown from, intent on bringing the pain to Orochimaru. Ten minutes later, Naruto arrived to the battlefield, only to find a bedraggled Sasuke and Sakura barely holding their own against the Sanin. Already sliding his hand across the driver buckle, Naruto began a new combo transformation as Orochimaru summoned another giant snake. Lion, Tora, Cheetah, Lata Rata, Later Atar, with a mighty roar of a lion. Naruto appeared in the all yellow combo, Later Atar. Blue compound eyes surrounded by golden mane of sharp armor shaped to look like a lion's mane, yellow gao. NT lets with long claws folded back at the wrist, and pale yellow greaves with black spots gave way to Naruto as he rocketed towards intercepting the snake, his claws already flipping out. Sasuke stared death in the face as the snake neared, and closed his eyes for his imminent end. When he heard the snake halt its rush and felt no pain, he dared to open his eyes. When he did, he saw a yellow and black figure, long claws from his wrists buried in the snout of the snake, facing him, stopping the snake with sheer force. What's wrong, Sasuke Tem? Ya scared, Naruto teased as he ripped out his CL. Ozen did a spin kick towards the snake, the blade of his cheetah legs popping out mid-swing, stabbing into the snake's eyes. As it recoiled and hissed, roared to the sky, it disappeared in a puff of smoke. Returning to the summoning realm, Naruto smirked under his mask and turned towards Orochimaru. Hey there, Pito Tem. He greeted the snake Sanin, smirking at the minuscule vein popping on said pale man's forehead. Kukukuku, I see you survived my seal, Naruto-kun. And this strange power, what is it? Orochimaru asked, eyeing him curiously. Wouldn't you like to know? Naruto asked in return, switching out of later Artar and swiping his hand across the buckle, this time purple rings appearing before him. From the information who flooded his mind with after their meeting, he knew Pudotirano was the strongest form. And Naruto wouldn't have to worry about making a conscious effort to not lose himself to the power, since due to his new physiology, he had perfect control over the purple metals. Terra, Tricera, Tyranno, Pu to Tyrannosaurus, Naruto appeared in his purple combo, green compound eyes accented by the purple wings sweeping across his head and the gold horn of the tiny pterodactyl's beak on his forehead. His shoulder armor bearing gold spikes pointing forward, his gauntlets have an add-on like a triceratops, clawed foot, purple lines down his white bodysuit under the armor. Large purple side skirts at his hips, purple greaves and boots finishing it off. Rearing his head to the sky, Naruto screamed a feral roar in his new form, shaking the entire forest of death. And unnerving Orochimaru ever so slightly. Looking at the ground and thrusting his hand into it, Naruto pulled out the Metagabryu, a hand axe with the purple blade held in the jaws of a T. Rex, a small cylinder under where he gripped it. As a half-human, half-greed, he was made of cell metals, and thus could use them at his leisure. As such, he was able to fill the weapon with cell metals from a cut on his palm. Overloading it for the axe mode Hisatsu, the blade glowing purple and crackling with electricity. With a quick clamp of the T. Rex's jaws, Along with the trademark Gokan, Naruto lunged at Orochimaru and swung. The Sanin dodging, but he didn't jump back far enough, as the sheer energy from the attack formed a huge energy blade that reached far past how far Orochimaru jumped, and spun around Naruto three times. Hitting the pale man every time, ending with a great explosion on the final contact. Orochimaru yelled as the explosion rocked his entire body and threw him deep into the forest. Once he stopped tumbling. He shed his skin to a completely undamaged form, but knew not to mess with how Naruto was now. I guess I'll have to give Sasuke-kun my gift later. He mused and sunk into the ground. Naruto stood in his hunched state, still standing with his final strike down, growling breaths escaping his mouth. While he didn't have to worry about the purple metals corrupting him. They drained a great deal of his strength, so he couldn't use them for long. Turning to his teammates, he clapped his hands loudly to get their attention. Uh, guys, we still have a test to do. Naruto reminded them. They snapped out of their stupors and barraged Naruto with questions, Sasuke demanding to have that power, Sakura backing him up that. Sasuke-kun can be the only strong one on this team. 
This earned them both a chop to the neck, knocking them out. God, can't believe I tried to be friends with him. And I had a crush on her. It's like crushing on a howler monkey. I'm surprised I'm not deaf. Maybe Kayubi healed my ears every time they should have busted. Naruto mused, shrugging his shoulders. Naruto hefted his teammates into a nearby tree hollow, letting them rest until they woke up. One hour later, you can come out, now. Naruto yelled to the forest beyond them. An Odo team walked out, that team that attacked Kabuto when he talked down on Odogaker, the mummy man with the thing on his back. The face braced dude with tubes in his hands, and the cute girl with really long hair. Naruto blushed at that thought. Where'd that come from? He asked himself shaking his head from those thoughts. Naruto smirked at the Odo team. Move aside, we just want the Uchiha. The black-haired boy said, Zaku, if he remembered, as much as I'd like to let you have your way with him, just to teach him a lesson. I need his emo ass, so I can't let you get to him. Naruto commented, seeing the Odo team prepare for a fight, Naruto swiped his hand across his buckle. Taka, Tora, Bata, Tata Ba, Ta da ba, ta da ba. Quote, Naruto appeared in the primary combo who had before he attained his so called god form, Tadoba. A helmet of a red eagle, green compound eyes, leading to the same arms he had as later Artar. And legs covered in green segmented armor, the toes ending with two sharp points. Thrusting his hand to the sky, a black sword with blue circuitry detail and a clear S. Lot on the side of the blade fell from the sky and he caught it as it almost hit the ground. This sword was the Metahaliber, the trademark sword of Tadoba. What the fuck? Zaku swore at Naruto's transformation. While they had never seen someone do something like this before, they found it in that strange uncanny valley between stupid and moderately cool. Unfortunately, Naruto seemed to be able to read their thoughts, and didn't take that first part well, as he charged forward with a roar, taking a swipe at Zaku, who dodged only barely then followed up with a nasty left hook to the jaw, which connected. Sending the black-haired Odo Genin flying into a tree, knocking him out almost immediately. Turning to Dosu, Tatoba swung, only to be blocked by the Odo Genin's melody arm, but his blade dug into the gauntlet a bit. Not letting up on the assault, Tatoba kept swinging at Dosu, who had no room or time to use his melody arm, only to block, as the gauntlet took more and more hits. Soon, it was completely broken, and the blade bit into his bare arm, making him grit his teeth to bite back a scream, as Tatoba snapped his right foot up, right in Dosu's chin, throwing him back, knocking him out on contact with a tree. Turning to Kin, he found she didn't seem to want to fight, so he used his bottom legs to jump up and land behind her faster than she could react and struck her in the back of the neck with his hand. Knocking her out, catching her before she fell, Tatoba reverted to Naruto who carried Kin bridal style towards his sleeping teammates, feeling she wouldn't be safe around her teammates. Especially after they lost. As he set her down, Naruto thought over his new destiny, master this power King Wu granted him and prepare for the day when he would fight for his life. When the day came, he was going to kick that bastard's ass, perfect being, or not. That was a promise, and you know Naruto and his promises. Naruto had brought his useless teammates to the tower, using clones to carry them. While he himself carried Kin in his arms, he dropped Sasuke and Sakura-like sacks of potatoes as his clones cast down the heaven and earth scrolls, the latter taken from the deaf. Eated Odo team after Naruto decimated Zaku and Dosu. The scrolls formed an X on the ground, erupting in smoke, and summoning Yumino Uruka, who greeted the genin only to be shocked into silence when he saw Naruto wearing civilian clothes. But more importantly, not that horrid jumpsuit, his teammates unconscious on the ground, and the same boy holding a girl in his arms. Uh, Naruto, what the hell happened out there? He asked. I grew up, Naruto answered simply, looking down at Kin, he shrugged his shoulders. Oh, and beat some asses. He added, chuckling to himself, Uruka joining in. So, can, you get OG Sans I can take care of this girl here? He asked. Uruka nodded and disappeared in a shunshun to find Sarutobi, leaving Naruto to drag his teammates to one of the rooms left for the paw. SSING Genin teams and tossed them onto the couch in one of the beds, while he gently laid Kin on one of the other beds and went to one of. 
The training rooms near the top of the tower to get acquainted with the various forms of U. He already used later Artar, Tadoba, Kudotirano, and the Kayubi, but there were still other forms, such as, from the information U gave him, Sagozo, Shada, Gatakiriba, Tajidoru, Barakawani. And the form his predecessor attained when he worked with every common rider before him, Tamashi. There were also the various forms that had parts of every solid form, a countless number of forms. Then there were the Biju medals. Naruto had quite the journey before him in search for mastering all this power. Wu also mentioned the abilities he would be teaching Naruto for the forms. Including some this, Hino Eiji, never acquired, also he would, be slightly entertained before he crushed Naruto under his boot. Ass, speaking of the Biju, Naruto set his sights on his first target, Sabaku no Gara, Container of the Aikibi no Shukaku. Naruto wondered what he could do with sand and wind at his command. Three days later, Naruto stood amongst the Genin hopefuls in VA, Ryus lines in front of the Hokage and various Junins, local and foreign. He was in the back of his line of three, Sasuke at the front, Sakura between them. After they woke up, they yelled at Naruto, Sasuke demanding he beg for forgiveness for, touching someone like him, Sakura backing him up. They were met with more chops to the neck. After waking up from that, they just ignored him, though glared at him often. After the speech that explained the Chunin exams was really a mask for war between the villages, a sickly Junin appeared, taking over as proctor for preliminaries, as there were too many Genin. Even with Kabuto's resignation and Kin's sudden disappearance, Naruto thought back to the conversation he had with the Sandame about the girl. Flashback. Naruto was currently training in his Gatakiri form, a crowd of clones not unlike his cage bunshin, except they didn't disperse with a single hit. As he trained, he was unaware of four adults walking in. Naruto-kun, an aged voice asked from the entrance, stopping all the Naruto's from their spars, some using the arm blades of the Kamakiri arms metal, turning to the voice after assimilating all the clones into himself, Naruto saw the Sandame and his advisors. Kaharu, Homura, and Danzo. Hey, J.I.I. San. Naruto greeted, rubbing the back of his helmeted head. Looking at him, the elders took in every detail of the strange armor the Kyubi container wore. On his helmet stood up two horns, similar to a Kabuto beetle, orange compound eyes on the helmet, a green mouthpiece under it. Under the armor he wore a black bodysuit, the O lung on his chest showing the three components of this form, Kuwagata, Kamakiri, and Bata. On his shoulders were small, black pauldrons, connecting the light green lines sprouting from the O lung. On his forearms he wore gauntlets of segmented armor with large black and green blades that reached to his shoulders with his arms straight down, pieces of armor on the tops of his hands. At his waist he wore the U driver, the normal size and slanted in his rider forms, from the waist came the green lines leading to the same armor he wore as Tatoba. Naruto-kun, what is all this? And why did you ask for an audience with me? Hiruzen asked. Well, um, Naruto started, rubbing the back of his head again as he glowed green and his armor disappeared, showing his new self in a black muscle shirt and baggy shorts. Causing the elders to gasp. Naruto, what happened to you? Sarutobi asked urgently. Well, it all started with us being attacked by Orochimaru. Naruto started, knowing that would start the shitstorm. And it did. As Hiruzen's eyes hardened and he cast a privacy technique on the training room. Explain everything, he ordered. Naruto sighed and began his tale with them being attacked by some creepy Kusanin. Only for said Kusanin to throw them around like ragdolls and reveal themselves to be Orochimaru of the Sanin, then continue toying with them. Only then did Naruto unintentionally draw on the Kyubi's chakra to face one of his snake summons, only for the Konoha trader to do something with his seal and throw him aside for dead. He then explained how he landed in the shed, found the tomb of King U. Who explained Kyubi was dead, and that he would be receiving a massive physical upgrade. He left out his eventual fight to the death for control over his body. It wouldn't do for Serutobi to worry about him. After leaving the shed in his new clothes, he faced another summon using Kyubi's power in another armor form. Then he proceeded to make his way back to O his teammates and give Orochimaru a sound thrashing. Granted he just healed it all, 
and Naruto most likely only accomplished what he did due to the element of surprise, but he ran away. Then Naruto explained how he fought off an Odo team with his new powers and procured the girl from the team, as he felt there was more underneath their team dynamic. He then advised the Sandame to maybe put her in for question, but nearly begged that she not be treated as a prisoner, as ever since Naruto gained the Kyubi medal, he gained this odd ability that allowed him to sense what he could only descry. Be is, bad vibes, from her teammates towards her, and something he definitely identified from her in droves, fear. It's possible she didn't want to be in that team, so Naruto even advised that maybe th. EY could offer her asylum if she's cooperative, though Hiruzen said he couldn't make any promises when it came to enemy shinobi. That is, very informative, Naruto-kun. I will have to bring this up with the council, but you have my word I shall keep Kin-chan safe. Hiruzen nodded, undoing the privacy technique and leaving with his advisors. You can't possibly believe him, can you Hiruzen? Danzo asked of his former friend. The story was entirely too far-fetched, that child is spilling lies. Even if Orochimaru appeared, which I highly doubt, there is no way the demon could have fought him off, even with his damnable chakra. Homura insisted, Orochimaru did attack, Anko-chan confirms this. She fought with him apparently after his confrontation with Team 7. And didn't you hear? The Q, UBI is dead. Hiruzen merely offered and continued walking, leaving his shell-shocked advisors in the hall. Flashback end. Due to the odd number of contestants, we will have to see who will fight twice. Please turn your attention to the board. Gekko Hayate announced, coughing now and then as a part of the wall slid up to show an electronic panel that cycled through the genin names. Uzumaki Naruto. It would appear Uzumaki Naruto will fight twice. Are there any objections? Hayate asked. Receiving none, he nodded and the board cycled again, this time with two slots. Then let the process commence. Whoever's name appears on the board will fight. Everyone else, please take your places upstairs. He explained. Uchiha Sasuke Akato Yoroi, will the two participants please remain in the arena? Everyone else, please take the stairs up. Hayate said, the genin funneled up the pair of stairs to the balconies above the arena, the Uchiha survivor and Kabuto's teammate remaining in the arena. Are both fighters ready? He asked, looking to the two genin who nodded mutely. Hajime, he chopped his hand down and jumped out of the crossfire, as Sasuke immediately started the fight with Kaden. Gokaku no Jutsu. Yoroi merely dodged out of the way and immediately charged Sasuke, his hand glowing with chakra. The two engaged in Taijutsu, Sasuke immediately noticing he was becoming weaker with each impact. Why do I feel weaker? What is he doing? Is he absorbing my chakra? Sasuke exclaimed mentally. Seeing Sasuke's eyes widen, Yoroi smirked behind his mask as both genin jumped away, Sasuke panting heavily. It seems you finally noticed. Yes, I have this extraordinary ability to absorb chakra. And I've taken enough to use a technique of mine. Sweden. Bakusui Shoha. He yelled, spit, ting out a massive quantity of water from under his mask. After he was done, Sasuke having to cling to the wall high up with chakra to escape the impending waves that might crush him against the wall. There was at least five feet of water covering the arena, Yoroi panting slightly. Guess I poured a bit too much chakra in that. Can I borrow some more of yours? He asked unnervingly. Sasuke only smirked down at him. His Sharingan blazing. Sure. Here's some now. Kaden. Hosenka no Jutsu. He yelled, spitting out various fireballs towards his opponent. Sweden. Sujinheki. Yoroi yelled in rebuttal. A wall of water blocking the fireballs. He was unprepared for the fist that followed the fall of his defense and he was thrown across the liquid floor, keeping himself from sinking with chakra channeled to his back and feet. Flipping up and charging at the Uchiha, he engaged him in taijutsu again. After taking a sufficient amount of chakra, Yoroi smirked behind his mask, as a well-placed right hook from Sasuke. Dispelled him, showing it was a Mizu Bunshin, the real Yoroi behind him, finishing a string of seals. Sweden. Debakuryu, he yelled the surface of the water churning as it soon turned into a whirlpool. Sucking Sasuke in as he tried to get a foothold with chakra, the fierce waters thwarting his attempts. Up above them, 
the foreign genin were surprised at the strength of this one mysterious, slightly creepy genin of Konoha. The members of the Rookie Nine were shocked that the Rookie of the Year was getting bashed around by some nobody. Soon after Yoroi decided he bashed Sasuke around enough, he brought the Uchiha to the surface with a Suro no Jutsu, having his head poke out of the water's surface. Walking up to him, he reared his foot back and kicked Sasuke in the temple, hard, knocking him unconscious. Cutting off the flow of his chakra to the water, the liquid soon evaporated, leaving the arena dry, Sasuke lying on the ground, face down. Hayate walked up and checked Sasuke, finding he was unconscious. Uchiha Sasuke is no longer able to fight, the winner is Akato Yoroi. He announced. The room erupted in applause, some cheers from people who personally knew T. He Uchiha and relished seeing him be knocked down a peg or two, including Naruto. The next fights were pretty interesting. Kins, tube-handed, teammate, Abumizaku, was matched up against Aburame Shino. His arrogance allowed the quiet genin to sneak his bugs behind him. Given an ultimatum of attack Shino and his bugs attack, or vice versa, Zaku opted to blow both sides away, only for his arms to bulge and explode at the elbows. Shino explained that, while he was talking big game, he snuck bugs into the tubes in his arms, clogging them up, causing the air to build up and explode. Next was Kabuto's remaining teammate, Tsurugi Masumi. Against Sabaku no Kankuro, the masked genin showed a disturbing ability to stretch his limbs as if they were rubber. After threatening to snap Kankuro's neck, he fulfilled that promise against his bravado, only for his threat to be turned on him as Kankuro revealed himself to be a puppet, the actual makeup its war paint. Wearing Genin from Suna in the bundle on its back, as he used his puppet to crush every bone in Masumi's body. The fourth match was laughable. It was Sakura versus Ino, ex-friends, two girls parted over their infatuation over the brooding Uchiha. They were particularly fierce after seeing him get trounced by Yoroi, but their fight was just a disappointing catfight, the only actual technique being Ino's Shintenshin no Jutsu, forcing Sakura to almost quit. However, the Pinket was saved by her own insanity, i.e. her split personality, inner Sakura. With a final punch, both girls were knocked out cold, the match ending in a draw. You could hear a pin drop in the building after that fight. Hayate interrupted the silence by announcing the next fight, Higurashi Tenten against Sabaku no Tamari. The match was over quickly, as Tenten's weapons were blown away by Temuri's fan. After said blonde's brutal finisher, the next fight was called, Nara Shikamaru, Rock Lee, only for the lazy Nara to immediately forfeit, as he h. Add a sneaking suspicion that Lee was much more than meets the eye. And it would be too, troublesome. Next was the moment Naruto was waiting for. Uzumaki Naruto, Sabaku no Gara. Naruto immediately jumped over the railing. Gara joining him in the arena via a sand shunshin. Gara, fight me with your all. I want to see the power of the Aikibi and see how it fares against my Kayubi. Naruto announced, smirking at Gara's shocked expression at how he knew his burden and that he had a burden of his own, uncaring that everybody heard him, since the Kayubi was dead anyway. Uzumaki Naruto, I thought wrong. You will indeed prove my existence. Give me a fight worth living for, Uzumaki Naruto. Gara raved insanely, sending his sand towards Naruto before Hayate could begin the fight. Naruto SMIR. Ked and slid his palm over his belt buckle. Kurama. Hard. Core. With a jingle of vaguely apocalyptic music and a flash of red, the shockwave blasting Gara's sand back. Naruto appeared in his Kurama loan combo. Shocking everyone, including the Sandame since this was his first time seeing it, Naruto roared to the sky, creating another shockwave that blew away Gara's follow-up attack. He then charged at the Aikibi container, dodging the torrent of sand that retaliated his impending attack, swiping at some tendrils of sand with his claws that were amplified with chakra copies. Once he was within his sand's guard, he shoved his fist forward, making contact with Gara's face, rocketing him backwards, only for his flight to be halted by a chakra limb growing from the vein on Naruto's gauntlet. A giant facsimile of the Kyubi's claw, made of flaming orange chakra with a black circle on the top and palm of the hand, connected by a black band around the hand. The limb pulled Gara back to Naruto, who was charging up a Kyubi Hisatsu, 
and he fired it point blank in Gara's face down at the ground. After the dust settled, it showed Gara with cracks all over his body, only for him to turn grainy brown and dissolve, showing he was a sand clone. At the sound of heavy breathing, Naruto turned to where Gara would have landed if he didn't pull him back. He saw Gara hunched over slightly, cracks all over his body, but not to the extent as the clone, glaring at him hatefully. Yes, yes, this is what I've been looking for. Give me more, Uzumaki Naruto. He raved insanely, again as the sand overtook him, making him into a sand tanuki hybrid, the upper half of his body covered in sand and imitating the look of the Aikibi, a tail sprouting from just above his waist, as he charged at Naruto with surprising speed. As such, Naruto couldn't react to the massive claw that slammed down on top of him, but he could use his strength to push it off of him afterwards. He immediately jumped off, I when another claw came down to crush him. Soon a shuriken, Gara yelled madly, swiping his massive arm as large shuriken made of hardened sand shot out of the limb and headed towards Naruto. Naruto, crossed his arms and his skirt separated and came to life, forming the nine fox tails that came to Naruto's defense forming a shield in front of him, blocking the large shuriken for him. Reverting his tails, he spied Gara forming multiple fang mouths all over his sand body. Futon. Mugen Sajin. Daitapa. He roared, blowing out a massive blast of wind combined with a sand cloud. Naruto retaliated with a chakra-empowered roar. Using the only offensive ability the Kyubi allowed him, raw chakra manipulation. It was basically a roaring contest between the two Jinchuriki, ending in Naruto's victory. As his roar burst through the sand-powered Great Breakthrough, making contact with Gara, blasting him into the wall behind him. Naruto immediately mounted on this small victory, charging at the transformed Gara embedded in the wall, brandishing his nine tails again, this time the veins on each of them coming into play, as chakra fists of the Kyubi formed at each end, and Naruto unleash. Ed a barrage of massive punches at Gara, slowly pushing him deeper into the wall. Each punch shook the entire building, and everyone was too shocked to even attempt to stop Naruto. With a final combined 11-way punch, Naruto shot Gara clear out of the tower, only to grab him with the large hands, making it look like the denizens of some fiery land were dragging. Gara into their hell, he hoist, Ted the deformed Suna Jinchuriki by his normal leg, as the sand soon fell off of him. Do you yield? Naruto asked only once. Gara looked at him in sheer terror. He had never been touched, let alone so badly beaten. I, I surrender. I don't deserve to exist. Kill me. Gara said, shocking everyone that heard him, including his sensei who cursed the boy for his weakness. Now the invasion would fail. His response was for a short dip that bopped his head on the ground. Are you stupid? Naruto deadpanned at him, having reverted to normal. That fight was too fun. No way I'm killing you. But I'd be happy to give you a rematch. Naruto offered. Why? Why won't you kill me? I lost. I don't deserve to exist. Gara Reasoned. His answer was another bop on the head to the ground. Get rid of that. Killing ensures my existence. Crap. Your existence is ensured by protecting those around you. That's how I've managed the will to live even after my childhood. Naruto responded putting Gara down. My friends are what makes me strong. He added, looking down at Gara who looked up at him upside down. Friends. Gara parroted questioningly, not understanding. Yeah, my will to protect my friends. But I'll be your friend, too. Naruto offered his hand down to Gara, giving his foxy grin that melted the hearts of several kunoichi who suddenly found the new Naruto attractive. Gara look, edit his hand as if it were some alien thing but slowly reached up to it. After grasping it, Naruto helped him up, shaking his hand and patting him on the shoulder. For the first time in four years, Gara smiled sincerely. He turned to Hayate. Proctor, I forfeit, he said. The winner is Uzumaki Naruto. Hayate announced to cheers. Oh wait, I almost forgot something. Naruto said, shoving his hand into Gara's stomach, only causing him to stare at it as it sunk into him like he was made of water. Pulling his hand out, Naruto was holding a brown light that soon turned into a large coin. Ga, Era mentally noticed the mad ravings of Shukaku stopped. What did you do? He asked. I took out the Aikibi and turned it into this. 
This kind of metal is what allowed me to use that Kyubi armor. I plan on collecting all the biju and turning them into more combos for me. Naruto explained like it was the simplest thing in the world. Gara's eyes were wide, as well as the nearby Hayates, the concentrating sandames. And the eavesdropping Tamari and Kankura were shocked. Deciding to try something, Gara turned to the sand scattered about and connected his chakra to it, willing it to congregate back to him and form his gourd. My sand, I still have it. And it feels, even easier to control. Thank you, Naruto, my, friend. Gara thanked Naruto, smiling sincerely again. Naruto smiled back, no problem, Gara. he responded, the Shukaku medal disappearing in a flash of light into his belt buckle of the miniature U driver. He said farewell to his friend and walked up the stairs to the balcony and stopped next to Kakashi. Naruto, what happened in the forest? Kakashi questioned mentally, knowing he wouldn't get an answer if he asked directly. His student despised him for his favoritism, it was the will of the council. He had no choice, he had failed Minato sensei. The next match boiled Naruto's blood. Hayuga Neji, Hayuga Hanada, the teammate of Lee and Tenten began the match W. I.T.H. hateful comments on Hanada's weakness and how she was destined for failure. Fate this, fate that, Neji was hellbent on the concept of fate. Even when Hanada did not back down and the two engaged in the Hayuga clan taijutsu, Juken. He showed no mercy, saying she was a failure herself. While it hurt Hanada inside to hear someone so close to her speak so hatefully, she rebutted with the fact that, even though Neji was a side branch member, who were supposed to serve the main branch and never raise a hand to them, he attacked her so hatefully. He wished to fight against fate, which he himself said was foolish. He responded with a berserk charge, intent on completely killing Hanada, who was on her knees coughing up blood, ignoring Hayate's yells to stop, that Hanada couldn't fight anymore. He was stopped by Naruto's fist making contact with his face, rocketing him into the same wall he sent Gara through. When he pulled himself out of the wall, his white eyes met with Naruto's crimson, hate-filled orbs. You would do this to your own family, even when she can't fight back. My sensei said those who break the rules are trash, but those who abandon their friends are lower than trash. I have my own addition. Those who raise a hand against their family are lower than that. Naruto said, turning back to Hinata, his eyes normal, as he kneeled down to her, holding her hand as the M. Edic Nin treated her wounds and failing heart. D did I, do good, Naruto-kun. Hanada asked, smiling painfully at Naruto. You did wonderful, my Haim. Naruto answered, smiling at her widening, tear-filled eyes. As she passed out with a smile on her face. He smiled more when the medics announced she would be just fine. He walked back up to his place with Kakashi, not seeing his soft smile behind his mask. After Neji was announced the winner, the next match was shown. Akamichi Choji, Kinyu Dosu. The match was sadly short, as Choji, spurred to fight by promise of barbecue if he won, immediately activated his Nikuden Sensha. Attempting to run over Dosu, who dodged easily and grabbed him when he got himself stuck in the wall, activating his new melody arm, which he had a spare for, the attack. K amplified by the water content in Choji's body, like all humans. Dosu was announced the winner. Knowing this was the last match, Naruto jumped down, and not having gone yet, Kiba joined him. Naruto, I only ask this one thing. Please don't use that armor you used on Gara. Kiba begged on his knees, using Akamaru's adorableness to help him. Naruto chuckled and nodded. I wasn't going to, so calm down Kiba. Naruto placated him, ignoring the dignity he lost in begging. Kiba smirked fairly. Then may the best man win. He responded. At Hayate's. Hajime. Naruto slid his hand across the U driver. Three blue circles appearing in front of him. Shachi. Unagi. Taiko. Shish shish shada. Shish shish shada. With a splash of water and another catchy jingle, Naruto appeared in a new combo. Clad in blue armor, Naruto's helmet had a fin on top. The whole thing modeled to look like an orca whale, two fins on the sides of his chin large yellow-orange compound eyes, white streaks curving over the head, ending at the sides of the mouthpiece. Once again, he wore a black bodysuit under the armor, the olung adorned with a whale, an eel, and an octopus, lines following the 
Eels design branching off on to the shoulder armor to around the bottom of it around to the back, white lightning bolts down the arms, a white tube plugged into the point extending from the top of the shoulders to the back of the blue wrist guards. Connected to the light blue Taiko design, the legs and feet wore armor divided into fourths, covered in designs of the cephalopod suction cups. Having already entered this form during his training, Naruto didn't roar. That technique Yoroi used was pretty interesting. Let's see how mine goes. Naruto announced, slamming his hands on the ground as water erupted around him, Sin. See the helmet prevented him from the usual spitting of the water source. Kiba, already activating his Shikyaku no Jutsu, retreated to the same maneuver Sasuke used against this technique, clinging to the wall, Akamaru on his back. After the water settled down, Kiba jumped down, already entering his Gatsuga with Akamaru, barreling towards Naruto, who made no move to dodge. At the last second, he turned into water, letting Kiba pass right through him, crashing into the mini lake he made. Naruto pulled the tubes from his arms, letting the tips sink into the water, and flooded the body of water with electricity, causing Kiba to attempt to howl in pain, only to swallow a lot of water and attempt to swim to the surface to breathe. Naruto stopped the flow of electricity and let him surface, watch. Hing as Kiba and Akamaru coughed up water and took deep breaths. He let them climb to the surface and stand using chakra. Kiba attacked again with his drill-like charge, flanking Naruto with Akamaru. Naruto jumped high up to dodge them, but cursed when the two managed to dodge each other and headed his way. He activated his water ability again, letting them barrel through him and his transformed body rained down on the lake. Reforming underwater, Naruto resurfaced, but only from the waist up. All right Kiba, let's finish this. Naruto announced the Taiko portion of his O-Lung flashing blue, as Kiba teamed up with Akamaru for a single large Gatsuga. Naruto retaliated by jumping out of the water, showing his lower body was transformed into the octopus tentacles his armor was designed after, bringing them together and spinning like a drill, meeting Kiba halfway as they fought for supremacy in their drill attacks. Naruto amplified this attack using the Unagi whips, adding electricity to his attack, winning the bout causing an explosion that shot Kiba and Akamaru out into the water, only for Naruto to recall the chakra that formed the lake, causing it to evaporate and not drown the duo. Hayate checked Kiba and Akamaru, and found they were only unconscious. Inazuka Kiba is unable to fight, the winner is Uzumaki Naruto. He announced to cheers again. Will the winners please line up in front of me? He asked as the medic nins took Kiba away. As the winners lined up, Naruto had a funny idea and discreetly made a clone. As Hayate walked down the line, offering a box of pieces of paper to the winners. He counted off the names. Uzumaki Naruto, Hayuga Neji, Kinyuta Dosu, Uzumaki Naruto. He drolled in his head, only for his eyes to widen and for him to look back, finding there were indeed two Narutos in the line. Both snickering at him, he looked at Naruto with a deadpan expression and bopped the clone on the head, dispelling it. Please call out your numbers, he said, trying to ignore Naruto's snickers. Three, Yoroi said. Four, Yash, Lee said enthusiastically. Two, Neji said. One, Naruto said, smirking ferally as Neji's face paled. You know, more than it already was. Eight, Dosu droned. Five, Shino said monotonously. Seven, Tamari said. Six, Kankuro announced. Okay. These are the arrangements for the next round. Hayate announced, gesturing to the board that had the matchups. Uzumaki Naruto vs. Hayuga Neji Akato Yoroi vs. Rock Lee. Aburame Shino vs. Sabaku no Kankiro. Sabaku no Tamari vs. Kinyu Dosu. You have one month to prepare for the final phase of the Chunin exams. This month will give you a chance to think up new strategies, as everyone saw what you were capable of today. Here is an announced from his spot. Everyone filed out of the tower and foe, load the Junins out of the forest of death and went their separate ways. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.